And I think we are live. I think we are live. Are we live? Yes, we are live. All righty. Oh my goodness, I'm nervous as hell for everyone who's looking and watching right now. We are streaming live on LinkedIn and on my personal Facebook profile. <laughs> and now I am going to turn off all my sounds and stuff, etc. So welcome to the Conversologist Show live stream edition where we talk about the art and science of conversations in the digital space. We know that technology can be a powerful enabler, but hey, look, communication and emotional connection still need to be at the core. I'm your host, Jamir, and this is, as I've said, the first live stream edition of the show. We are usually on audio on um, Spotify, and I would like to invite you to converse with us. So. Joining me today, streaming live in San Fran or San Francisco, California, is Rebecca Shu, Product Marketing Manager at Opus, a professional simultaneous interpreter, storyteller, food lover, I love food as well, globetrotter, I'd love to know offline, Rebecca, where you've been, and sarcasm connoisseur, I wonder, that's the first term I've ever actually heard. Um, a sarcasm connoisseur. So she loves, anyway, learning new things through reading, uh, traveling, and exploring. And most of the time, you can find her either in an ice cream shop or on her way to an ice cream shop. So <laughs> I love ice cream. So it is actually great that we have a guest and the topic it's going live and, you know, about live streaming, the do's and don'ts harnessing tech to bring out the creativity which is the art and of course tech science to engage the audience and more hello rebecca thanks Hi, for being Anna. here of course very honored and uh very glad to join your show to talk about live streaming at large and i'll try to be as less sarcastic as possible <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, now, cool. So uh, before we actually start with any of the questions whatsoever, we would really like for people to join us, you know, and when I say join, participate, comment, react, wherever you are, we are live on Facebook, on my personal profile, and on LinkedIn, my personal profile. So we would love you to really participate. So you're seeing actually, I'm pointing to the right one. Yep. The the um, QR code, which is actually a neat feature, by the way, we're in at any time during this live stream, you can just pick up your phone, use your camera, and then scan the QR code, and then uh, just go through the steps and it should ask you to record like a comment or if you've got any questions and you press submit, it will actually come to us and then we'll look at the comments and see and we might be able to actually show your comment or your question. So how cool is that? Alrighty, so um, let's get started. So Rebecca, um, look, live streaming isn't for the faint of heart. Okay. Uh, I hate seeing myself on video, to be honest. I mean, I've done live streams before, but you know, I'm not super comfortable, but in your experience, um, what type of content creators have you worked or partnered with, you know, that do live streaming often? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, there are many different types of creators um, that go live and I guess um, when we talk about live streaming, a quintessential live streaming creator that will pop up in our minds are gamers who will usually go live on Twitch or YouTube. But increasingly, especially since COVID, I've seen more and more of what I call, or many people call knowledge creators um, going live. And by knowledge creator, I mean, you know, creators who are passionate about learning new things and disseminating useful or entertaining information to their communities. And in the live streaming world, um, knowledge creators include so many different types of creators, like um, all kinds of coaches, including business coaches, leadership coaches, coding coaches, 
relationship coaches who I've worked with、um, several and video podcasters, which I think Jam is now one. And I've seen so many more video co-、uh, video podcasters joining live streaming world, and also booktubers. I love booktubers. And of course, marketers. As a marketer, I think a lot of marketers are utilizing live streaming as a way to, you know, gain more exposure for their brand and achieve their business goals. Yeah. So increasingly, a lot of more and more knowledge creators are entering the live streaming sphere and use this as a powerful tool to grow their、uh, community and grow their business. Um, I'd like to just ask booktubers. Did you just say what are those? Are, are they the ones that review books?、Um, I'm curious because I'm a book nerd. So yes, booktubers are super creative and community loving creators who love to share books that they read with their community. And a lot of booktubers would、um, host regular live、uh, reading sprints. So a lot of times I would join their live reading sprints and use that time as my designated reading time. Super cool. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, look. See, I learned something today. That's why I love doing this. Okay. Cool.、Um, I've got the next question here.、Uh, what digital channels or say social media platforms do they usually stream to? You know, is it、mm. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn? Or any other stream、um, channels, or do they do it one by one, or like what we're doing now? Do they usually stream to different or multiple multiple channels?、Hmm, that's a another great question.、Uh, I see the majority of creators multi stream to different platforms, what we call simulcasting, and of course the reason why they multi stream is, I mean, the benefits are a lot. For instance, you can expand your reach. Um, you can meet your audience where they are, which is super important, especially in today's internet world, where different your different community members may reside in different social media platforms, and you can also take advantage of each platforms. I know a lot of gamers like to stream on Twitch and YouTube because they can use the tipping system to you know gain more、uh, to monetize. And for instance, if you are a B two B marketer, then I think you should definitely take advantage of both LinkedIn and YouTube. And、uh, speaking of the popular platforms to stream to, I've just mentioned、um, some like YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitch. Aside from that,、um, also Facebook, which I know Jam you're currently streaming to, and、uh, um, Twitter, TikTok, or even Instagram.、Um, and for your question, which digital channels or platforms、um, do they stream to? It's there isn't really one size fit all answer because different、um, different creators have different audience or、um, different preference.、Uh, I personally think the choice. Really depends on two aspects. First, your audience demographics.、Uh, as I said, if you're a marketer, then maybe you should choose LinkedIn and YouTube. If you're a gamer, then maybe Twitch、um, or YouTube. And secondly, it really depends on your bandwidth、um, because. Everyone's time and efforts are limited, and we all know the mantra of quality over quantity. So I think that creators should definitely choose platforms that are most suitable for their goals, and they should always start with platforms where they already have a decent number of followers, so that they can have,、um, you know, momentum from the get go. Got it. Actually.、Um... Discord is another channel、uh, that I'm seeing.、Um, I know it's very popular first with gamers because I'm on Discord as well. I've got heaps of communities and stuff, and they've got this stage. So it seems like there、um, some gamers or communities right now they actually prefer to do the live or on stage、um, streaming. And another that I've found as well, there are a few. Community platforms like the Mighty Network and so on,、um, like our lab as well. I mean, we stream inside our community versus、mm-hmm. the public one like this to social media platforms, and it looks like it's getting to be it's being a trend. It, I see that trend now that if you've got that private community type of platform,、um, not just a text forum, I can actually see them going on stage, so to speak. If you're Whoever is listening to this, whether recorded or live,、um, if you know Discord, I mean, you can check it out because I actually love the platform. And I guess Opus is is on Discord as well, right? 
Uh, yes, we can connect to Discord using RTMP. And uh, um, to build on what you said, um, yeah, I do see a trend of more and more creators streaming to their exclusive inner community, uh, which is super awesome because, I mean, community is all about um, establishing and deepening this close and tight relationship with your community members. Um, so yeah, definitely aside from all the major platforms I mentioned, you should think about you know, exploring some um, exclusive communities where you can um, deepen your relationship with your audience. Totally agree. No, love it. It's all about community. Okay, well, um, qu next question. Uh, what are the, oh, I'm sure this is like a frequently asked question for live streaming, right? So what are the challenges, right? Dun, dun, dun. Content creators face, like myself, when they go live. I mean, apart from getting really sweaty hands here and trying to get nervous and you don't commit mistakes, but um, maybe you can just give us a few challenges that yeah. you've seen. I can I actually talk days about all the challenges that content creators face. <laughs> Because unfortunately, um, I mean, live streaming is also doomed by the Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will definitely go wrong. Um, I guess in the interest of time, I'll just point out three challenges when uh, the creators face before, during, and after they go live. So before they go live, one of the biggest challenges that I often see from creators is they don't know how to choose the right tool or they choose the wrong tools. Um, well, of course, they're um, already many live streaming tools in the market and you really need to do your homework and choose the right tool based on your intent for live streams for instance if you're a very professional tv producer then maybe you can use like obs um, if you're a gamer then i personally would recommend a stream which is very uh which is amazing and it has is integrated with all sorts of amazing third party tools to spice up your gaming lives, um, live streams. If you focus more on um, engagement, then I think Opus is the right thing for you. And during the live stream, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest um, challenge for content creators is that they do not make the live stream an interactive event. I mean, live stream is so unique exactly because it's an interactive event. Um, however, due to pressure, um, a lot of creators just, you know, their brain would just go blank and forget to interact with their audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have to remember that live streams are two way dialogues that is intended to create this personal connection between the creators as well as the audience. Um, yeah. And the last challenge, which happens after live stream is that a lot of creators just forget to repurpose the content, which is the live streams. Um, I perceive live streams as great top of the funnel content that is extremely versatile in the sense that you can turn live stream into almost all kinds of assets like podcasts, blog posts, infographics, short videos that you can post on so many different platforms for you to gain extra exposure. Um, this is especially important in today's fast moving world. How can we you know, achieve more by doing less? Um, and content repurposing is definitely one way to help creators to achieve more by doing less. Yeah, so these are three challenges that I often see creators have. No, that's awesome. Um, and it's interesting you mentioned about, you know, engagement and the two way conversation, right? And that's what the show is all about. Okay. Well, um, we actually have one or two video comments um, that they've submitted through the QR code. And I'm just pausing here to anyone who is actually joining us right now live you do see those that qr code um somewhere either on your left or right depending on where you're looking at right um all you have to do is to actually go and um use your camera and um scan the qr code and then it goes through the steps and you can submit your video content and we're going to actually see it here in the platform so we do have one question from amanda yep let me play that hey so i'm not very comfortable doing video let alone live video streaming so do you have any advice for me on how to be a little more confident that is 
A great question, and to be honest, it's also a very challenging question. I'll try my best to answer it.、Um, I think my advice, my only advice, would be don't overthink and just give it a try.、Um, from my personal experience and based on my conversation with hundreds of creators,、um, I think this kind of discomfort comes from. Comes from here. It's the psychology,、uh, psycho,、uh, psychological effect. A lot of times, you're uncomfortable because you just worry too much. You think too much. You may think that, oh,、um, you know, it would end up like a disaster. Oh,、um, other people would judge me if I do this wrong or do that wrong.、Um, however, as I said, most of the things is just. It's just overthinking. It's just in your brain.、Um, a lot of times, it won't happen. My suggestion is that just. Give it a try. Don't overthink. Worst case,、um, I mean, I don't really think there is any worst case. Worst case,、um, but you know, worst case, your live stream will just be a happy record of、uh, <laughs> your first step towards the becoming a live streaming guru. Awesome. Well, Amanda,、um, I hope that actually answered your question. Um, and I think we've got one from. I'm just scrolling through here.、Um, maybe if we can actually, can we show the other video comment? There you go. Hi, I'm Ru. I have a question about moderation.、Um, given what we know about the kinds of things that have and Undoubtedly, will again be live streamed.、Um, what are your thoughts on moderation, self moderation, external moderation?、Uh, what's the best balance, and how does that work? This is an amazing question.、Um, content moderation is definitely one of the biggest topics、um, over the past few years, and、uh, it's definitely very important for live streamers, especially live streamers who have a huge amount of fan base. And with you know, hundreds or even thousands of comments coming in within an hour of live streaming,、um, to be honest, I am not an expert in content moderation. But、um, based on my experience, for you know, giving advice on how to moderate your live shows,、um, I do see some good practices. First is that there are already a lot of mature third-party bots that you can. Download and integrate with your streaming platforms, for instance, YouTube or OBS, and use bots as an auto moderator. This is, I think, this is the most、uh, widely used way for content moderation. And second is that if you have a producer, then you should definitely utilize your producer as a manual or a human moderator. However, not everyone has the luxury of having a producer. So, if you think you are a very professional live streamer who can multitask, then maybe you should you can also help yourself. And lastly, and this is something that I see from several creators who have a very tight knit community.、Um, many community members would. Volunteer to be、uh, moderators to help make sure that no、um, no bad comments would come in into the live shows. I hope that answers your question. I'll also definitely do my homework uh, and uh, maybe give you advice later on. No, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm just gonna pause and see if there are actually any other video comments coming in or text comments, etc. Um, okay, cool, awesome. So here's my next question. So, do you have tips on how live streamers can keep their audience engaged and tuned in? You know, art and science, meaning tech or the creative side.、Mm, that's that's a great question.、Uh, you're always asking great questions. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Or <laughs> tips on how to engage with. Uh, live streamers. There are already a lot of、um, tips that、um, you know creators can learn.、Um, but I think, like on top of my mind, the first tip is that you have to re always remember to engage with your audience. I know it's, it kind of sounds funny, but a like a lot of creators forget to 
engage with the audience during a show because live streaming can be really stressful. And as I said previously, under stress, your brain would just go blank and you would just be the you just start like a one man show and talking on your own. I mean, unless you're a Beyonce or Taylor Swift, which I'm pretty sure that your audience would love for you to only for you to talk. Um, unless you're them, I think you should definitely remember to engage with your audience. And my um, my practice is that before the start of the show, I would just write down all the ways of engagement that I want to use to interact with my audience. And I would also specify at which point of the show I want to use that ways of engagement. And I would put that um, note in a very obvious place so that I won't miss it, even if I'm super nervous. And another tip is that as you mentioned um, about how technology will enable or help creators become more creative and engage with your communities more, um, you should definitely choose a great tool. There are, um, I've heard a mantra or a saying which goes to the extent that um, how good you perform or how good you are is at, at a great extent determined by what the kind of tools that you use. Um, so you should definitely choose a tool that either has um, engagement tools or it can be integrated with third party engagement tools. And at Opus, we are very focused on developing engagement tools to help creators engage with their audience and grow their fan base. And our most loved engagement tool is actually called Emoji Ring, which is an AI smart Ooh. tool that automatically grab all the emojis from a chat box sent by your audience and show them in the form of falling emojis it's super fun and i, sh I encourage every creators to you know check it out and see if it helps with engagement and uh lastly um my tip would be to always analyze your engagement and see what works and what doesn't work you may have, you know, hundreds of bells, um, bells and whistles for engagement, but only 10 or even one of them works. So always analyze your data. And if one thing works, for instance, if you host a poll and poll really works, then maybe you should do more polls for, for your um, upcoming shows. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm not so sure. Um... Um, I'm not obviously looking at the live stream, et cetera. So I'm not so sure how many are actually live. I mean, we can do a poll, but um, are we able to actually show the emoji, Raina? That's really interesting. Um, or it is obviously dependent if anyone has reacted at all during the live stream. Um, yeah, so I don't know, Rebecca. Let's turn on. Uh, let's see if we have any Facebook, um, Facebook viewers. <laughs> can drop some emojis and let's let us be amazed by it yeah no cool while we're waiting we'll see so if you are hearing us on facebook if you are on facebook i think all they have to do is basically rebecca am i right well basically all the reactions right so if it's a like or a heart and so on um and then uh to have the emojis rain down, I guess that's the way of saying it, right? <laughs> I actually love that. Love, love, love the emoji rain um, if we get to actually show that. But no, cool. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So for the, there is another question here. I think this, oh, hang on. So there are, there is another and I think you've already asked, uh, answer this earlier. There was another video question from Amanda, which is like for first time live streamers and advice and tips. Um, should we show that comment, Rebecca, probably? Let me see. Uh, yeah, emoji rain is turned on on my end. So all good. Okay, let me just show another video question from Amanda. Um, okay. I am going through here. There you go. Hey, so for people who are doing live streaming for the very first time, do you have any advice or tips to get them started? 
There you go. That's a great question. Um, let me try to <laughs> collect my mind. Um, because there are just obviously so many tips that I can give. Um, in the interest of time and also in the interest of not overwhelming first time create live streamers, I'll just give two tips. Um, first, as I said, uh, briefly mentioned previously that choose the right live streaming tool. Um, however, do not get too infatuated with professional setups. I've seen, I've talked with a lot of first time live streamers who are so determined at finding the best cameras and the best mics even before their first show. Almost as if once they get the best camera and the best mic, they will become the best live streamers, which can be true. Um, however, most of the time, you don't really need a super professional setup in order for you to become a great live streamer. What's really important is having like a decent or the right live streaming tool plus your you know, um, ingenuity as well as your creativity and more importantly, your willingness to start a successful live, live streaming show. And secondly, I know it sounds very corny and so many people have been mentioning it, but indeed practice makes perfect. Um, I, I, even now I'm still kind of nervous, but like the two, two years back, I was super, super bad at you know, facing the camera and start chatting with people online. And uh, it practice definitely helps um, for me to be more comfortable with camera and share my thoughts in front of mm, a lot of people. Um, yeah, so definitely practice, practice and practice. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> um, oh, there's actually, yeah, I would love to show that meme by the way. Um, yeah, no, 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 that's, that's awesome. And just look, I came from, so <laughs> I came from, um, theater as well back in the day and live streaming is sort of like, I guess theater as well. Cause unlike like on TV shows or movie, you can just go cut. Okay. Let's redo. But on live stream, you can't. Um, it's interesting you mentioned about practice, 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 because when you're live, that's it. Anything can happen. Eh? And it's just what we were taught is to um, like train ourselves um, to do really great improv, like improvisation. So just in case it doesn't go based on the script, I mean, just you have to be just in a snap as much as possible <laughs> and yeah. try to not really show that you're going, oh my gosh, hang on, nothing's working. And so, but Hey, look, that's why I guess I love live streaming versus a video because with a video, you tend to be a little complacent and you go, well, I can do it 10 times over and make it as perfect as possible. But with live, that's it, right? So yeah. another another practice I just um, think of is um, you can record yourself and uh, see like second by second where it goes wrong and where it's not going wrong, uh, is, is it goes right. Um, when I was, I'm, I'm still an interpreter, but when I was practicing uh, during us as school, um, our professors required us to record our interpretation and listen to our interpretation. I mean, listening to your sound, it's, 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 it's not comfortable to say the least. However, that helps me a lot in becoming a professional interpreter because you know, um, what goes right and what goes wrong. So record, maybe record yourself. And I know that it can be a little bit cringy seeing yourself on live. <laughs> yeah. That will pay off. That will pay off. No, that is awesome. Well, um, that's it actually for today's show. We keep it short and sweet. Um, thank you again, Rebecca, so, so much for, um, I'm not so sure what time it is right now in San Fran. Um, what is it? What time is it anyway there? Yeah. 6.30. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's 6 .30. not bad. Yeah. 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 Okay. But you now again, thanks for sharing and supporting, um, this live stream today and to actually give me and other future content creators, you know, the opportunity to harness well technology, right. For our creative pursuits, so to speak. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, thank you so much, Rebecca. Really, really loved having you today. And, um, thanks for the insights as well. And of course, thank you to everyone who is here live or if you're watching this recorded. I mean, look, there is still that QR code that you're seeing over there. 
go ahead, scan it. If you've got other questions, it is going to be saved and sent to us. And on my next episode, I'm going to pick some of those video comments and I would love to actually answer them or have another guest or maybe have Rebecca back yeah, again. I can also Why create not? a video comment to respond to their video comments. Yeah, exactly. That would really be cool. Right, exactly. Um, so just in closing, um, look, stay tuned for more guests. Believe it or not, I am going to um, do this a little bit more um, with some guests, probably just me talking, doing a monologue with you, of course, helping me converse and ask your questions and we'll just have that conversation going um, around digital tools. I love really just focusing on digital tools. I don't know, I've just been doing it for years and years and it's been a while and I really want to do it again. It's my happy place. Um, I'm really interested in going live or doing some videos in terms of metaverse for work, not necessarily for gaming. I'm a gamer, so metaverse for work, I'd love um, to talk more about that. And of course, the most talked about topic right now is AI, not necessarily chat GPT, it could be included. But there are other AI tools out there. And I, the, I mean, the platform that I'm using right now has a little bit of AI when it comes to memes and stuff. So um, I if you would like to be part of the show, please send me a private message, Facebook or LinkedIn hit that follow or as they say the bell to be notified on the next episode on your preferred social platform we're also on spotify if you love audio and you can subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast app so thanks again everyone for listening and spending your time with us and remember to keep the conversation going <laughs>